Hi, welcome back. Today's class will be about 20 minutes. It's for beginners. We won't use many props, but if you can gather a few around, that would be handy. Uh, we'll use one strap if you need it, and then have two blocks and a bolster or some sort of height. So the blocks may be sufficient. All right, let's get started. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. Okay, I'm sitting on my heels. Toes are moving back on the fronts of the ankles. You can lift each leg to kind of clear that space in the front of your ankle. Sit heavy on your hips. I'm gonna move forward. I have two blocks here. If you are tight in your shoulders or your head's not going down very far, you can use the blocks. So first, you'll bring your fingertips onto the floor and be on the tips of the fingertips so you can press back, lengthening through the arms, through the shoulders, and bring the weight right onto your, your hips where you can feel your hips moving back towards your sitting bones. Okay, so if you can't feel that and you're up a little bit higher, then definitely use the blocks. It will take the load off the knees. But if you can go back further, then you can start to walk your hands forward and from there, have your knees far enough apart that you can slide and you feel the front ribs sliding forward, the whole front body is lengthening forward. And then finally, you're gonna straighten your arms, extend your fingers forward, and release your head between the arms on the mat. If it's too far down to release the head, then have, the he have some support there. You can also have the blocks. As I mentioned, if your hips are lifting up, you can take the blocks higher so that it takes the load off your knees. All right, so you're still lengthening back, but you're using the hands and drawing the hips back, which then takes the load to the ankles and to the feet. And then stretch your arms forward. Again, you can use that block or support to rest the head. Stretch your toes back. Observe the front of your ankles. So feeling the front of the ankle down on the floor. Sometimes the outer ankle moves out and you're on the little toe side of the foot. Be more on the center of the foot so you squeeze the outer ankle toward the inner ankle and extend. And if you don't need those blocks, you can just start to Walk your hands forward a bit more as you draw your hips back. Keep the forearms lifted off the floor so the elbows aren't on the floor, but you're establishing a connection from the hands to the wrists to the upper arms. Through the whole arm, inner arm and outer arm, drawing back towards your chest. Take a few breaths there, lengthen. And as you are there a little bit, releasing, feeling that you can start to extend your arms forward, at the same time still stretching back through the feet, the ankles, the outer hips, from the outer knees to the outer hips, and lengthening forward at the same time. A few more breaths there, and then come up. I'm gonna take the blocks to the side. If you Need the blocks, then you'll use those blocks. So now we're going to go over into Parjva, forward Virasana. So here you're taking your arms over. This outer right side of the trunk is lengthening. You can use the other hand to just get some purchase there and lengthen. And then finally, extend your hands forward. Press with the front hand, draw the hips back. Stay with the breath. Feel that extension coming on the outer side of the armpit chest, drawing back to that outer right hip. Keep extending the toes back. 
and then coming back to the center, lengthening forward. You may feel that one side is more extended than the other. And then we'll go to the left side. So if you were using the blocks, you could have the hands on the blocks and you can always slide the box forward. Like so. When you're using the blocks or you're using the hands on the floor, as I'm going to the left now, I want to keep this left hip down. So I'm creating that extension through the whole left side of the body. Strong movement of the hands down. And then lift up, turn, and extend the fingers forward, palms forward, extend the arms. And then come back to the center. Just getting that nice opening through the armpit chest, deepening in the groin. And then we're going to stand up. So you turn the toes under, bring the feet hips width apart, or actually mats width apart, and come onto the fingertips. Now here, if you, difficult to go to the floor, to bend forward that far, then have your hands on the blocks. All right, and then shift your weight. You can see here my hips are going back, so I can feel the weight on my heels. So I wanna shift forward, so I feel more weight on the front of the foot and the heel. And then that puts my legs in alignment with the, with the foot, the heel, the knee is better functioning there to keep that connection between the lower leg and the upper leg. Walk your hands forward, almost like you were going to downward dog, extend. Again, getting that length through the side of the trunk. And then walk your hands back. Let's just do a, a little twist here. So you can come from the right side, bring your left hand on your hip, and then take the other hand on the outer side of the leg. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. As you feel the weight on the feet, lift the kneecaps up, lift the backs of the thighs up. Exhale, turn. And then coming back to the center, walking forward again. Take a few breaths there. Shift your weight if it's gone to the back. So the hips are moving <coughs> forward. The thighs are moving back. And now taking the other side without shifting your weight. So stay even. Keep the balance even on the right side and the left side with the back hand on the pelvis. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, turn. Drawing that right shoulder up. Keeping the knees active so you can feel that spreading through the back of the knee and the spreading and the widening through the thighs. And then walk forward again. And then bring your hands onto your hips. Inhale, come up. And stand in Tadasana. So we're going to stand. I'll turn around. We're going to stand in Tadasana and we're just going to bring a little bit of activity to the feet and the calf, okay? So we're gonna bring the arms up, hook the thumbs, and press evenly on the mounds, the big toe mound and the little toe side, and then just come up and down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, come down. See if you can keep your weight even on the big toe side as well as the little toe side. And then palms facing one another. Inhale, lift up. And then bring the arms out to the side. Keep lifting on the toes. A couple more times. Inhale, lift. So if you lose your balance, just slow it down. Mindful of that weight. All right. And then stand in Tadasana. Inner edges of the feet together. If you have any kind of issue in your hip or your back, you can, or you're having your, on your cycle, or you're pregnant, you can bring your feet apart, okay? 
So touching the big toe side, inner heel, bring your arms out, rotate the arms, bring the arms up, and come into Namaskar. Extend the arms up, and then bring the hands down. Come forward, interlace the fingers. You can hit your heels apart a little bit. Stretch the big toes forward and feel the weight on the front of the foot and the back. Lift the knees, tailbone in, thighs back. As you stretch your arms out, connect the arms back. Inhale, lift up. Badaguliyanasana. So broaden through the hand. Bring the little finger side of the hand down. Keep the shoulders moving down so you're not hunching. You're not shortening the, through the neck and you're not compressing the upper spine. Bring the elbows towards one another, and then bring the hands down. Change the cross on the fingers, so if the right was on top, change to the left. Inhale, extend the arms up. Feel the shoulder blades moving down and toward the chest. So you're opening and stretching the armpit area. So it's widening, it's lengthening, and you're doing that with the lift of the arms from that whole shoulder girdle. And as you do that, maintain the weight on the feet, thighs back, tailbone forward. So often, maybe you might come forward again like this. Before, we were bringing our hips back inadvertently. So here, maybe you'll find your hips moving forward. Move your weight back onto your heels, thighs back. Resist the buttocks forward and reach up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Bring your arms out to the side. Now we're gonna bring the hands behind you. So you can either take your hands on your elbows, hold your forearms, or you can take your hands, I'll just turn around and show you. Take your hands up, Pashina Namaskar. I'm gonna connect the little finger side of the hand. So baby finger, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and then press the hands against one another Again, standing in Tadasana, balancing on the feet, between each leg, firm the outer thighs. So we're hugging the muscle into the bone. So the skin, from the skin toward the muscle, toward the bone. So get that action through the legs. And as you have your hands together, feel where they are. Lift the chest, widen through the front chest. Breathe. Observe whatever you feel in your wrist, your fingers. Bring you the heel of the hand closer. Bring the fingers closer. And press from the elbows right into the heel of the hand. Release. Extend the arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. Let the wrist be completely neutral. So not bending the wrist one way or the other. Extend right up through the fingertips. And then bring the arms down again. Bring the hands back. Pashina Namaskar. Collarbones wide, shoulders moving back. Absorb the spine right where you feel the fingertips, the outer edges of the fingers. Or if you have your hands in this position holding onto the forearm, just feel that that back body helps to lift the front chest. If you have crossed the arms, then you would just change the cross on the arms on the second crossing. Stay with your breath. Okay. And then release the arms. Tadasana. And you take your legs wide. Prasarita Padatanasana. Here you may need the blocks again, so just have them handy if you do require the blocks. So we're hinging forward from the hips, keeping the legs long. Thighs are moving back. Again, aware of the weight on the front of the foot and the back of the foot. Bring your elbows back, chest lifting, and you'll hinge forward from there. As you press the heel, lift the backs of the thighs up, move the front thigh back, and come forward. As you come forward, either the hands on the blocks or hands on the floor, be on the fingertips, lengthen forward, Roll the inner knee back, roll the inner thigh back. So when we go forward, this inner thigh has got to move back. Usually this is turning outward, so you want to have the knee and the thigh facing forward. 
and then coming down. Just take your hands on your outer ankles, bend the elbows, and release down any amount. If you can bring the crown of the head on the floor, then you'll do that. If not, just have the crown of the head facing the floor. Stay with the breath. And then inhale, look up. Bring your hands back onto your hips. Inhale, come up. Bring your heels in, toes in. So because it's such a wide stride, you don't want to jump your feet together. So regarding jumping, if you have any kind of problems in the knees or the ankles or the hips or you're having your cycle or you're pregnant, you'll always walk your feet together. Okay, now we're going to just come to the front of the mat and extend the arms up. Just a couple sun salutations. So you're going to either walk or jump back. Lengthen the arms, open the armpit chest. Bend the knees. Walk or jump forward. Uttanasana. So we did this earlier with the feet wide. Bend the elbows, release the head down. Inhale, look up, Urdhva Hastasana. And coming forward again, extend the arms, fingertips down on the floor, bend the knees, walk or jump back. Adhimukha Svanasana. Stay a few more breaths. And then bend the knees, walk or jump forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, come up. Urdhva Hastasana. And Tadasana. Okay, you're going to stand back in your mat. Stand in Tadasana. We're going to jump the feet apart, three and a half, four feet. Nice wide jump. Turn that back foot, left foot. Externally rotate the right leg. And then as you bend the knee, come from the tailbone, move the tailbone forward. So you can look and look at, at your foot. You want to have the knee tracking over the second and third toe. Keep this arm extending as if it were going to be lengthening in line with your back foot. And then looking over that hand, tailbone down. Inhale, come up. Turn. So do the other side now. Bend the knee, stay in that back foot, keep that back thigh lifted. As you come down, lift the pubic bone up, lengthen through both sides of the trunk, extend that back arm, and look over the front hand. Stay with your breath. Inhale, come up, turn the feet, bring your hands onto your hips, and then turn to the first side again. Turning that back foot. Bring your hands onto your forearms. We're going to come into Parvottanasana. So it's a forward bend again. So you're hinging from the hips, pressing into that back foot, lengthening forward. Both legs are straight. Extend forward. Just come parallel to the floor, looking down. And then as you come up, press back into the feet, come back into the legs, turn the feet, and then we'll turn to do the other side. Turn that back foot, change the cross on your arms, lift the chest, press that back heel down, lean back slightly so you can feel the weight on that heel, and then make sure that back leg is straight, straight in the front leg, pressing into the foot, Lifting up from the knee and exhale, hinge forward, lengthening. So feeling on the back where you can feel the back start to round. Pause there, bring it in, lengthen the front ribs forward. So you want to maintain that length through the front body as you fold forward. Keep the weight on the front of the foot and lengthen through the back of that leg, that left leg. Inhale, come up. 
Maintain your balance. Turn your feet. And then bring your arms out to the side. We're going to do one more standing pose, Virabhadrasana 1. So making sure you have enough distance, take that back leg back a little bit more. Take your arms up, bend the knee, and lift up through the chest. Extend through that back leg. Drop the front hip. Where you had your hands in Pashina Namaskar, lift the chest from there. Inhale, come up. Turn the arms. If you needed more space between the legs, you can take this foot over to the right a little bit more. So if you're not having your balance, just make more space between the legs. Arms out. Lift up. Stay in the back leg. Tailbone moving forward. Tailbone guides the pelvis forward. Reaching up right up through the fingertips. Breathe. Inhale, come up. Turn. Jump the feet together. Okay, come down onto your knees. And you can sit on a block. Lengthen the thighs. And we'll come into a twist. So have another block behind you. Raise up through the right arm. Exhale, turn. Draw that back shoulder back. Just be aware of your feet on the floor. So the fronts of the feet and the toes are on the floor. Toes are lengthening, ankles moving down. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, turn. Inhale, exhale. Come back to the breath. And then bring your hands down on the outer leg. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. And then come back, reaching up. Bring the hands down. All right, you're going to come up. You can have your two blocks, depending if you are going to need those blocks or not. You can have them behind you, or you can come onto the toes. So we're going to come into Ustrasana. So we're opening through the front of the pelvis. Buttocks moving forward, chest lifting. So take your hands, your thumbs, right on your sacrum. Elbows moving back towards you, toward each other. And then with your thumb, move the top of the buttocks down, lift the chest. If you're familiar with Ustrasana, bring your feet onto the floor. Press the feet down. And then lengthen the arms back. You can either take the hands on the blocks or take the hands on the heels. Lengthen the fronts of the thighs. Rotate the armpit. And then release. Okay, so now we're going to go into Supta Padayanastrasana. You can just bring your feet to the wall as you come down onto your hips, measure your distance, have the feet at the wall. My knees are bent, so I want to keep the knees bent so that when I straighten the legs, I don't lift the shoulders or the hips, and then I can feel the whole back body, my shirt moving down top of my pants. So. That's the direction you want. Take your strap, bring your strap onto the arch of the foot, spread the toes, keep the hip moving down, thigh moving back toward that wall. Bend your elbows, connect the upper arm to the shoulder, take a few breaths. Bringing the leg towards you any amount. You can walk your hand up the strap a little bit more. You can do that. If that's too much for your hamstrings, then stay in that first position. And then coming back, take the leg down. 
So this is a nice one to do every day because it helps to bring that length through the back of the leg. Thigh descends, extend the heel up. Also, you're able to connect the, the bones from the heel through the ankle, through the tibia, through the femur bone into the pelvis. So feeling that lower back on the floor. If ever you have a sore back, this is a nice one to reconnect so that the bony structure is supporting the lower back. And then bring your leg towards you any amount. If you can bring it further towards you with the knee straight, then do that, but walk your hands up that strap a little bit. And then coming back. Okay. So now you're going to come into Shavasana. So you can use your bolster. Take the bolster underneath the knees. Adjust your hips. And then lengthen each leg out. Bring your arms out to the side. So here I take my feet onto the floor. Lengthen the lower back. You can take your hands on your mat. Roll the shoulders under, palms facing up, and then extend your legs. Okay, we'll be here for about five minutes. So I will set a timer for you. Just let yourself relax completely. Release from that practice. It was a short practice, but still we moved into a lot of different areas. So just take a quiet shavasana, releasing and allowing yourself to Allowing yourself to find the earth moving down.
Namaste.